Welcome to another uh, session of the five seasons of marriage. This is session 4A. We're looking at the third season, relaxed love, eight, uh, years 11 to 25. I said that we're starting to feel relaxed in the second season, but here's where it really becomes uh, evident in our relationship. And I said this is years 11 to 25, marriage relationship. See, as we, as a couple, as we build history together, we can become so connected or blended together that we can actually start to lose our individuality. Our individuality may start to suffer and we may actually start to become codependent on each other. Uh, codependency is where one or both persons in relationship have an excessive reliance on the other person for approval. Not reliance on the other person for a physical disability, but I mean, but for the sense of approval and that sense of identity. Do you still know who you are? Have you lost your identity in your marriage relationship? And so the couple. Uh, may actually become codependent upon each other and needing each other to define their identity and to give them a sense of significance. And in the beginning of season one, the task, remember, the two individuals needed to work together, uh, blending their individuality into a, into a unit, into a team identity. But now in season three, the, one of the greatest task is two individuals needing to work at uh, maintaining an individual identity and not let their individuality get, get lost in the marriage identity. And again, there are five distinct tasks that we have to face and overcome. First task, maintain an individual identity along with the marriage identity. Um, see, because there's two forces in our marriage uh, uh, um, and we may either begin to um, drift apart is the one force or the force to actually become entangled in each other's lives. One of those two forces, well actually both forces are at work. One to push us apart and one to entangle us in our relationship. And, and you, know, one, you know, too often one partner will actually uh, feel all the feelings of the marriage relationship or ne feel a sense of needing to fulfill all the responsibilities of the of the marriage relationship and the other partner may become um, overly dependent on their spouse for these things right like the one may depend on one to do all the responsible things because they can't handle the pressure because they're uh, either because of the kids in the home or because they're in the workplace you got to do make all those decisions I just can't or um, or you know, like you're just working and, and you you're like you're no longer feeling, you're not sharing your feelings, you're just so absorbed in your responsibilities. I'm the, I'm gonna have to feel all the feelings for this family, and I've I've heard that said by different uh, members of a couple. And so you see, it's not that dependency is a bad thing. Uh, healthy dependency is good. Okay, we can be dependent on our spouse, on our friends, and on God. Uh, but if we become over dependent on our spouse, that's called codependency. And so we need to learn to love each other and spend time with each other. But the danger comes when we cannot live without each other. And I hear that, my husband, I just can't live without him. Uh, that's scary. Uh, honestly, that's scary. Our identity has to be based on something bigger than our marriage partner. Okay, and and just to be clear, uh, divorce never cures dependency, codependency. Divorce never uh, cures codependency. The problem lies. Um, below the level of the marriage and deep inside the individual. And, and, and codependency uh, on your first spouse will often, most often, be transferred to your second spouse and you'll just become codependent on your second spouse. So it's important for the marriage to develop a deep intimacy and a deep unity, but still be made up of two individuals. You know, it's, it's uh, the goal in marriage is not independence and the goal of marriage is not codependence but a healthy inter 
dependence. You, you know, there's a moving back and forth of responsibilities in tasks and things like that. There's a balance in marriage called interdependence. So how can we work on maintaining individual identity along with the marriage identity? Well, number one, maintain and cultivate outside friendships. It is so important that for the couple to have common friends, but also for each partner to have individual common friends of the same sex. Um, they need people of the same sex who they can hang out with and spend time with, do things together. That's why stuff like bowling leagues and, and, and hobby clubs and things like that, are, general interest clubs, are so healthy. We need to maintain and cultivate outside friendships. Another thing we can do is develop personal hobbies and interests. Um, it's good for a couple to have a common hobby, but it's also important that each person has common hobbies or, or, uh, or each person has an individual a hobby or interest, or they can socialize with other like-minded people, like uh, music groups, maybe jamming together in somebody's uh, uh, garage or whatever, like common uh, with outside people, uh, personal hobbies, okay? So cultivate, out, cultivate, maintain and cultivate outside friendships and develop personal hobbies and interests. Second thing we, uh, a second task we have is to deal with adult or adolescent children. Learn to deal with adolescent children. See, this is the season where now we got teenagers, right? And, and um, our teenagers are striving to become adults. And, and we need to help them become uh, individuals and individual adults. We need to help them make their own decisions and make their own mistakes and let them make their own mistakes and and cheer them on for every good decision they make. So how do we deal and help uh, with the progress of our adolescent children? Number one, teach them life skills. You know, in, in our household, anyone over the age of 10 has to do their own laundry. We give them life skills, teach them how to cook, teach them how to do basic life skills. Um, there are so many important life skills that our teens need to know and learn. They can become um, successful and mature adults, such as how to cook, how to do laundry, how to choose a career, how to get a job, uh, how to manage finances, how to budget, how to have, a health, how to have healthy relationships. Um, how to resolve conflicts, and all those other life skills that every young adult will need to survive in the world today. Um, so we have to prepare our teens uh, to get a good education and get a good job and, and find a good spouse and, and begin life on their own. That is how we have to deal with our adolescent children, is give them life skills. And, and eventually release them, uh, good or bad. They, we eventually have to release them. And so it's time to give them the life skills they need. A third thing we need to do in this third season is to let go of some things and accept some inevitable losses. To let go of some things and to accept some inevitable losses. Um, you know, because a major task of this third season is to face the realities of middle age, right? Face the realities of middle age. We're talking about years 11 to 25. So we're now 30, 40, 45, um, maybe even 50 now or older. Um, you know, and, and one of the big tasks of this season is, is to cause us to pause and, and take note of where we're at and where we're going in our lives. And then to accept the losses that tend to become obvious in this season. Because only by letting go of some things can we actually embrace other things in this season. Uh, for example, we may need to say goodbye to lost youth and let go of it. We're not going to be as young as we used to be. We're not going to have the energy we used to have. We're not going to have the uh, uh, vitality of, of youth. Uh, we need to say goodbye to youthful dreams. Uh, you may not become that astronaut that you wanted to be. Right? Let go of some youthful dreams and let go of them. Uh, one man said, uh, you know, when I graduated from high school, I wanted to change the world. 
Uh, by the time I finished college, I wanted to change my country and make my mark on the country. When, when I was in graduate school, I thought I would change my state or my province, but now today I'd just be, re I'd be a lot really content if I could just reorganize my, my office, right? We have to change our uh, uh, dreams and make them more realistic to where we are in life. We also need to say goodbye to our physical, uh, youthful physical shape and vitality and let go of it. Just can't do those things, some of the things I used to do. We need to let go perhaps of our healthy bodies and, and realize that bodies just wear out over time. They really do. Okay, You may have a pain you didn't have before because your muscles and your body just not working the way it used, used to work before. It's okay to say goodbye to that and let go of that and, and, and change your lifestyle to something more reasonable. And, and most couples also have to face and accept certain limitations in their financial situation because things cost more than you thought and kids cost more to get through university and, and you know along the way uh, the house took more to maintain than you thought, the cars were more expensive. So you may have to have certain limitations in your financial and even your vocational uh, um, achievements. You know many people in this season will say well is this all there is? Uh, has this been, you know, is, has this been worthwhile? Is my life been worth, worthwhile? And we need to let to go, and, and hear me, I'm not trying to say get rid of all your dreams, but we may need to let go of some career dreams because we will most likely not be doing exactly what we wanted to do in life. I don't know anyone who is doing exactly everything they want to do in life and doesn't have to do anything they don't want to do in life. I don't know anyone like that. The reality is that, that really, I, I, I've been told, I've never experienced it, I've been told very few people will meet or exceed their life's dreams and expectations. Most of us will have to mourn some shattered dreams. Uh, we wanted our kids to be more average than they are. We wanted uh, them to go higher up the, uh, the ladder of success. We wanted us to have a higher vocational uh, uh, um, position than we have. We wanted to be more elevated in our community status than we are. Um, we're, and we all experience regrets and, and many will experience emptiness unfortunately and, and we'll feel that too much of life has gone by and, and not enough been accomplished and, and we also, you know, like just these are just realities and we also, at this season, we're going to have to start to let go of our parents as parents and instead make them friends and no longer parents. They're now changed the relationship and, and eventually we're going to have to let go of our parents completely as they pass on. And, and we're going to have to deal with the grief of lost loved ones, um, starting with our parents and uncles and aunts. Well, certainly grandparents first, but then parents and then uncles and aunts. And, and you know, we're going to have to deal with the issue that no one or an, no anything in life is going to be with us forever. So how can we let go? How can we let go? Well, develop an attitude of gratefulness. We can develop an attitude of gratefulness. We can be grateful for our parents now instead of waiting till they've left us. We can be grateful for our successes now rather than grieving those areas that we didn't succeed in later. We can be grateful for accomplishments now rather than grieving for the things that we didn't accomplish later. So develop an attitude of gratefulness. Number, the second thing, continue to cultivate new and ongoing friendships. Because throughout our lives, we will continue to lose meaningful relationships. I've, I've lost a number of meaningful relationships in, in this last year, friends and family. Um, you know, first we're going to have to uh, let go of grandparents, as I said, and then parents, and then aunts, and then uncles, and eventually siblings, and cousins, and friends. And, and our family connections will be uh, forever shrinking. And the only way to, to, to solve that issue is to keep making new friends. We should be always cultivating new friends and building up our existing friendships. Keep expanding our circle of friends and therefore a circle of influence and blessing. Third thing we do is invest in the next generation. This is a biggie, invest next generation. We can definitely invest in our children. You know, as I said, give them life skills they need, things like that. But we can also invest in other people younger than us. I've been blessed to be able to help people start businesses, uh, to, 
teach people uh, practical skills. Um, it's fun. It's rewarding. Um, we can teach them our skills. We can mentor them. We can help them develop character. We can help them to, su to succeed in their lives. You know, they will become our true inheritance and our legacy that we leave behind when we go. And they can carry on, get this, they can actually carry on and complete the th some of the things that we started. So invest in the next generation. And really a fourth thing, if we're going to let go of some things and accept in inevitable losses, we've got to learn to practice true forgiveness. You know, this is the season where we've got to learn and practice true forgiveness. If we're going to let go of certain things, uh, we need to learn to the art of forgiveness. Because some of the things we have to let go of is, is betrayal, disappointments, uh, things people have done to us. So we have to learn to practice true forgiveness. We have to let go of any and all bitterness uh, due to unfulfilled expectations. We have to let go of any and all sense of betrayal from past relationships. We have to let go of all, any and all the wrongdoings that our parents did towards us uh, or towards each other. Um, we, as well, we have to forgive our parents for not giving us all the things that we felt we needed from life. And the reality is no parent can. And so we have to learn how to walk in forgiveness towards all the people in our lives um, because it's a lot easier if we're going to let go, uh, to let go of losses in life if we've learned how to practice true forgiveness. So there's the first three tasks of, tasks of the, of the uh, third season of marriage called the relax season. I'm going to come back and finish uh, session 4B and talk about the last two tasks. Hope you'll return for that one. Bless you.